Yeah. Yes. Okay, yeah. so Welcome for the you. last but not the least, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you <laughs> Kian. Oh, I will just. Zalim Kian. Zalim. Oh, Jesus Christ. Don't forget. Zalim <laughs> and Matthias Hoffs. You know, I, I have only second languages, I mm. never mastered one. <laughs> On progress in metaphysics. Yeah, um, thanks to the organizers for organizing this. Thanks um, to you all for staying here. Um, it's been an exciting day already. Uh, I hope we can keep it up. So we will talk about uh, progress in metaphysics. And uh, of course, we will look at this topic from the uh, perspective of the meta-metaphysical view that we already heard a lot about uh, today. Um, and we call this here, um, yeah, somewhat reluctantly, naturalistically inclined metaphysics. Um, in a first approximation, it can be um, yeah, characterized as the thesis that metaphysical theories should be firmly based on the natural sciences. And uh, yeah, we've heard several exemplifications of this mode of doing metaphysics today, and we've also heard several uh, problems that come up when one tries to formulate this view more precisely. Um, one thing that we did not hear much about today is um, the notion of progress that naturally comes uh, with this mode of doing metaphysics. And um, this notion of progress would be that scientific progress actually boosts metaphysical progress. So metaphysicians make progress when scientists make progress. For example, um, our metaphysical theories now are a lot better than they were, say, 500 years ago because our um, scientific theories are <clears throat> much better than they were 500 years ago. And hopefully in 500 years, we, have, we will have even better metaphysical theories because we will then have better uh, scientific theories uh, and maybe even have something like a final scientific theory. Um, so this idea of progress um, has been criticized by um, Carrie McKenzie recently. Uh, before I get to that, we'll see here a quote by Lady Man and um, Ross, Everything Must Go. And they say, we expect that our particular positive account of the nature of the world will be deemed mainly or perhaps even entirely incorrect by future philosophers who will know future science. <coughs> so um, just like our current scientific theories are probably wrong, uh, the metaphysical theories that are based on these scientific theories are of course, also probably wrong. Now, this might be accepted um, if it is the case that we are at least making progress, right? If it is at least the case that <coughs> our scientific theories that are based on the current, uh, our metaphysical theories that are based on the current scientific theories are better due to being based on a better scientific theory. However, um, as Mackenzie um, argues, Progress in metaphysics does not go hand in hand with progress in the natural science in this way. Um, so the fact that a metaphysical theory is based on a better um, scientific theory doesn't mean that it necessarily makes progress towards a final metaphysical theory in the way that a scientific theory make, might make progress towards a final scientific theory. Um, and this raises questions for um, how we can understand metaphysical progress for one, the question is, can we make progress in metaphysics at all if it's not boosted by scientific progress? And for the other, what's the value of our current metaphysical theorizing if we are not making progress? Given the quote of Lady Man and Ross before, if we are not even making progress and the theories are wrong, what's the point of uh, doing it? Uh, yeah, and this is Mackenzie's challenge, and our aim of this talk is to uh, give a defense of naturalistically inclined metaphysics against this challenge. Um, we will do so by focusing on the notion of progress, and um, we will propose a notion of progress that can be understood as exploring and constraining theory space. Good, here's the outline of our talk. Um, first, uh, we'll go into a little bit more detail concerning McKenzie's challenge, then we'll briefly discuss a reply by Emerson 
Um, then we will uh, introduce our own notion of progress and uh, explain how this um, gives us an answer to McKenzie's challenge. And finally, if we uh, still have time, we'll have a brief comment on the relation to inductive metaphysics, which is one kind of this naturalistically inclined metaphysics. <laughs> so let's start with McKenzie's challenge. So the observation is that scientific theory change is a problem for naturalistically inclined metaphysics, um, basically because um, the kind of progress that we find in science, uh, which rests on the ideas that um, scientific theories that um, are a scientific theory and its successor are um, related by certain approximation relations. So the successor uh, contains the um, predecessor as an approximation. And this is what gives us uh, progress in science, uh, Mackenzie argues. <coughs> but um, canonical metaphysical claims cannot meaningfully be regarded as approximately <coughs> true in the same way. We cannot have, have like um, approximation relations between different metaphysical theories, or at least so Mackenzie argues. So there are actually two uh, distinct uh, ways to um, frame this challenge, I would say. The one way would be to uh, focus on the observation that we lack a final scientific theory. So why bother doing metaphysics when we don't have the final um, scientific theory? The other would be to um, focus on the lack of a good notion of progress. So how can we make sense of metaphysical progress? We will focus on the second way to frame the challenge, and the reason <coughs> is that actually uh, the lack of a final theory seems to be unproblematic if we are at least making progress, right? Um, and for example, in physics, it is unproblematic that we have a final, uh, not have a final theory because we are at least making progress. So let's uh, focus on this notion of progress. Um, progress is ex approximation. This is the kind of progress that Mackenzie has in mind. Um, so a new theory, um, a new physical theory, for example, T nu, approximates an old theory, T old, if T nu contains T old in some <coughs> mathematical limit. So for certain ranges of values or something, um, the two theories will get the same results. And um, plausibly, like the uh, history of science, uh, can be read as such a um, chain of uh, theories that stand in such approximation relations. So general relativity contains Newtonian mechanics um, in a mathematical limit. Quantum gravity uh, contains general relativity and so on. <coughs> and then finally, uh, we'll end up at the final theory that again will contain the uh, predecessor in, in approximation. In metaphysics, uh, we don't seem to have like these chains. And especially we don't have these mathematical approximations because we just don't have like the mathematical apparatus that would allow to have such mathematical approximations in metaphysics, um, at least oftentimes. So uh, does this mean that um, in metaphysics we do not make any progress? Um, here's a reconstruction of Mackenzie's argument. Um, so what we end up with is that naturalistically uh, inclined metaphysics is in fact not valuable at all. So we have to add some premises apart from that it's not uh, making progress. Um, and first of all, we would have to say that metaphysics is valuable only if it makes progress. Um, then we have the specific notion of progress. It makes progress only if it approximates truth. Uh, but uh, it approximates truth only if its central claims can be approximately true. And then finally, the central claims cannot be approximately true due to their um, binary non-mathematical nature. Um, yeah, we could discuss all of these premises. We will focus on the premise that uh, Mackenzie also focuses on, namely the uh, claim that the central claims, claims of metaphysics cannot be approximately true. What made it, might it mean for the claims of metaphysics to be approximately true? Um, well, they could either be true about approximately everything, or they could be approximately true about everything, or they can be expressed mathematically in the way that scientific claims uh, could be um, expressed mathematically. And then we would have the same kind of approximation as in science. 
However, uh, for neither of these options, it is plausible to apply them to metaphysics. Why? Let us have a look at a, a paradigmatic metaphysical claim, uh, the claim of uh, structural realism, all properties are extrinsic. What could it mean for this to be approximately true? Well, it could mean approximately all properties are extrinsic, but strictly speaking, this would mean that not all properties are extrinsic and then structural realism would be false rather than approximately true. Um, then all properties are <coughs> approximately intrinsic, extrinsic. Well, what could it mean for uh, something to be approximately extrinsic? It would mean to be not exactly extrinsic, but then again, we would say that um, structural realism is uh, false rather than almost true or something. And the third option, uh, mathematical, um, this is out of the picture, just as I've said, because of this binary nature of the claim, right? So there is no sense to be attached that such a claim could uh, contain something in a mathematical limit. Um, how will we reply to this? Well, our basic strategy is to say that um, <coughs> metaphysics can make progress without approximating truth in Mackenzie's sense. And as we will uh, later see, there is still a, if you like, modal sense in which metaphysics approximates truth. Um, like we um, make the um, modal um, area in which the truth theory might be smaller and smaller, if you like. Um, and this could be understood as a form of approximation. Um, and um, yeah, the notion of progress that this then relies on is um, progress as exploring and constraining theory space. And as we will see, this um, notion of progress is insta inspired by physics because uh, the examples that motivate this notion of progress come from physics. Um, it is also applicable to metaphysics and it reestablishes the connection between physical and metaphysical progress. And uh, with that, I give the word to Kian. Yeah, um, thanks, Matthias. Um, yeah, so before I come to this, um, to presenting our proposal then, uh, let's first mm -hmm. um, briefly discuss a recent reply uh, by Emerson, uh, also to, to uh, Kerry McKenzie's challenge. Um, and essentially, um, Emerson um, draws on progress as increasing uh, understanding. Um, so, he says that we make progress in science and in metaphysics um, if we grasp explanations uh, of increasing depth. Um, and the depth of an explanation is then measured um, with respect to the range of interventions uh, you can uh, uh, perform and uh, still have it being invariant. Um, and um, our, make, our main criticism uh, here is that um, Emerson then still relies on what you could call uh, a direct uh, relation between uh, predecessor and successor theories. So you have two theories and they stand in a direct uh, um, relation to each other uh, um, and then you can say that you have actually uh, progressed from theory A to theory B. And uh, we think that this still demands too much um, and uh, uh, so um, progress uh, can be had already in science uh, without such direct progress relations between two theories. Um, and uh, yeah, so this is uh, now our account on progress ex as exploring and constraining theory space, as Matthias already said. Um, so again, generally uh, we hold that direct approximation relations are too demanding already in uh, science. And for illustration, uh, we would like to consider um, the case of particle physics. Um, here we find that theories are tested and eventually eliminated um, by empirically constraining the parameter space uh, uh, where, a plethora of theory, where the plethora of theories of particle physics um, are situated in, and then we, we can, we can uh, um, eliminate by constraining this parameter space uh, uh, several theories at once. And this is uh, opposed to, to kind of um, probing specific theories one after the other. So, um, so um, yeah, the theories of particle physics will vary uh, or do vary uh, with respect to their particle content, of course, um, particle masses, coupling constants, and all uh, kinds of uh, parameters. And um, 
those parameters are empirically testable. Um, so, for example, you can you can uh, find out which which uh, particles exist, uh, what the masses of these particles are, how they couple to each other. Um, <coughs> so, uh, whether some uh, whether some theory is empirically adequate uh, can be determined by measuring the values of uh, such parameters, and um, then the theories. Uh, we, we, we come up with in particle physics, or physicists come up with in particle physics, um, are sensitive to uh, the empirically determined values of such parameters. So, for example, if certain collider experiments constrain the mass of the Higgs boson uh, to 125 GeV, um, the many theories that predict uh, um, a mass of the Higgs um, of, uh, say, uh, 115 GeV uh, or around that. Uh, uh, mass are empirically uh, excluded. And this is already prior to discovery. Um, so, uh, such, uh, uh, so this is, I think, a Higgs exclusion chart uh, just, just pre-discovery uh, from, I think, 2012. And um, so what you see here are the, the, the various bands where previous uh, uh, <coughs> endeavors found that the Higgs is not situated. So we have the Tevatron exclusion bands, the Atlas and CMS exclusion bands, uh, and so on. And then you see that, um, or maybe you don't see it, but, but yeah, so, uh, so you have here and here, there's a small window where the Higgs could uh, still be. And um, yeah, so already prior to discovery, you would find that uh, uh, particle physicists will look at such exclusion charts for, for, for a parameter like the Higgs mass and uh, uh, take this as, important, uh, as, a, as, a, uh, as an important resource for model building. Um, yeah, so um, more is to be said obviously on the notion of theory space. Um, so I, I said that there, there are plenty of parameters in our physical theories, so if you have n parameters then those span uh, an n-dimensional theory space. And each point of that theory space will uh, uh, correspond to a specific theory for specific parameters according to uh, these n parameters. And each region um, corresponds to like a set of theories that are, uh, uh, if they are situated uh, closely by, then they, they have some similarities, obviously. Um, so uh, important also to, to so I've, I've, I've uh, so a uh, parameter like the mass is obviously a quantitative uh, parameter, so, but you could also think about having qualitative parameters as well. So for example, you could think of uh, theories uh, being local or non-local and these kinds of things. And then you would have uh, qualitative dimensions in theory space as well. Um, and then um, this, in this theory space, basically, um, the set of theories is ordered uh, according to similarity relations and differences between those theories in, uh, uh, by drawing on, on uh, these uh, different parameters and different dimensions. Um, so theory space orders the plethora of theories by exploiting information about the parameters that individuate them. And um, um, then uh, in this sense, uh, we, we can still say that um, the relations between the theories are relevant but they are not, uh, as I will come to in a moment, relevant for the um, claim that we need to make progress. So we just have some information about how the theories are related, but we do not uh, uh, pin down our notion of progress uh, on such relations directly. Um, I think I don't have water. <laughs> yeah. Mm. <laughs> So just this yeah. this uh, slide is for constraining theory space in science, right? Yeah, yeah, that's still science. Yes, okay. uh, it's it's pretty similar in metaphysics than in metaphysics then, but uh, I come to that. Yeah. Um, so if you uh, then empirically constrain the values of the parameters, as I uh, just showed you in the uh, Higgs case, you will constrain theory space and the set of candidates uh, candidates for finite theories encircled in a way and narrowed down. So this is kind of a meta. Uh, way of uh, um, 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 approximating the truth as you also, I think, said. Um, yeah, so um, the important point now is that also in physics we, we do not only <coughs> have like this uh, falsification on this, f falsification on this uh, uh, notion of, of constraining theory space and excluding theories, 
but we also have uh, a notion of exploring theory space. So we basically, or physicists basically, then identify series possibilities, uh, and that's obviously connected to a notion like model building. So we try to model uh, certain, we, we, can't, we try to come up with uh, new models uh, that are still uh, uh, in agreement with the available empirical data. Um, so we've tried to find theories um, that are located in non-excluded parts of theory space. Um, and that might be within a, di uh, within a given framework, or that might be just uh, like broadly searching in exploratory searches, uh, and that's related then to uh, what, what also some people have worked on recently, um, how uh, like in collider experiments you can also have um, experiments that do not depend on a certain um, background theory. Um, so if you take that point of view, then um, you will find that um, if some experiment fails to exclude some region, then this typically triggers an increased interest in that region and people come up with uh, models that sit in that region. So this is kind of explained why, why, there, is this, uh, uh, why there is this happening in, in science. Um, and um, so we had that like for, for various uh, um, we had that for various light Higgs uh, uh, theories, we had that for uh, split SUSY models and, and these kinds of things. Um, and maybe also you could say that the, this, this explanatory uh, mode is best exemplified um, by cases of, uh, let's call it false alarm. Um, so you have some preliminary uh, experimental data, you think that uh, um, um, that holds, but, but then eventually it turns out to be wrong. Uh, so people come up with models that would uh, uh, confirm that d would be confirmed by that data, but eventually uh, uh, um, we, we just uh, just uh, this dies out and, and it's not uh, um, uh, researched further because um, yeah the uh, this was a false alarm. So for example, superluminal uh, neutrinos would have been such a case, or the the bicep two uh, data. Uh, um, just a couple of years ago. Um, so, how does that now relate to approximation, um, or more specifically, uh, can we still make sense of the uh, notion of approximation? Um, so, first of all, if you have these kinds of uh, um, this, this kind of exploratory and, and uh, constraining theory space mode in, in, in science, then this cannot be accounted <coughs> for in terms of McKenzie's notion of uh, approximation. So we make progress in science, uh, but this is not because there are certain theories that are related uh, by approximation relation, uh, but it is because uh, theories are eliminated uh, um, uh, and uh, uh, or theories are explored. Um, so the eliminated theories in particle physics are not um, uh, less accurate predecessors um, of the true theory. They are just different theories. You can just, uh, yeah, you have no direct relation between them. Um, so this practice cannot be accounted for in terms of direct approximation. But in our account, we think that approximation case, cases can be accounted for. Um, for example, Newton's theory is empirically ruled out, uh, but general relativity uh, is not yet. So uh, this is like a short version of how you can uh, account for approximation cases in our proposal. And the, the, the basic reason why that is is, of course, that we have a less demanding no notion of progress. Um, so exclusion exploration <coughs> already constitutes um, progress. Um, so now progress in metaphysics. Um, um, we think that this view easily translates to metaphysics, um, where you have uh, an exploring mode uh, in terms of you formulate new theories that have not been considered before, uh, or you uh, refine extant theories, um, defending them against objections, etc., um, checking for consistency, and so on and so forth. And you can constrain theories, although that might be less common in metaphysics than, uh, than in, uh, in, 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 in physics, for example, uh, by revealing inconsistencies or um, revealing incompatibility with uh, scientific theories. So um, then we think that there are, amongst others, uh, these ways of how scientific progress can then boost metaphysical progress in the exploring mode. Um, 
you can get inspiration from uh, development uh, from the development of new theories. For example, if you find that quantum gravity is uh, um, uh, coming up in physics, and uh, there are certain suggestions from quantum gravity that space-time might not uh, be <laughs> fundamental in, in a specific sense, uh, then you uh, could uh, take this for inspirations uh, and, and uh, develop space-time eliminativism uh, in, in metaphysics. Or um, you find new problems in uh, science. For example, you find certain uh, features of quantum mechanics that then may raise uh, uh, issues for indiscernibility uh, of uh, particles uh, in, 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 in uh, metaphysics. Um, the refinement of extant theories, for example, you have uh, Lewisian metaphysics and then um, you find that there is quantum mechanics and there is entanglement and then maybe you've uh, come up with a new way of having a world-making relation uh, which builds on entanglement instead of distance relations. Um, so, um, yeah, and then how much time do we have? Okay, that's fine. Right. Um, thanks. Uh, so, um, yeah, and, and you can develop new arguments for extant theories. You can draw on quantum mechanics to have new arguments for structural realism and so on and so forth. And um, for the constraining part, that might be more problematic in metaphysics, and we can discuss this, of course, later. Um, but we think that there's still, uh, there are still cases where you have it. Uh, for example, classical humanism um, is certainly uh, uh, challenged by quantum mechanics and there is a sense in which uh, classical humanism uh, is then uh, excluded uh, from, from the theory space uh, in metaphysics. Um, yeah, if we have the time then you can know. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I'll be quick. Uh, right. So. Um We've had a general notion of progress now that um, we hope nicely aligns with the general um, idea of naturalistically inclined metaphysics. Um, I now want to briefly discuss um, the relation of this notion of progress to one specific kind of naturalistically inclined metaphysics, namely inductive metaphysics. Uh, so what is inductive metaphysics? Um, <coughs> well, the um, rough characterization uh, that we can give is um, on the one hand it relies on certain sources of knowledge and excludes other sources of knowledge and uh, the sources of knowledge that are encouraged and uh, respected especially um, are of course experience and um, like the same kind of uh, sources of knowledge that the sciences rely on and uh, the full range of scientific theories where we have like the um, scientific theorizing in between, right? So you have the experiences, then you have the scientific theories, and then metaphysicians can take on the scientific theories, as it were, as data for their theorizing. Um, so those are the respected sources of knowledge. Then we have a certain methodology, and here the most um, <coughs> special part of inductive metaphysics is probably its reliance on um, abductive inference. So <clears throat> the idea would be just that just like in the science, um, inferences to the best explanation and different forms of abductions are an important instrument. Also in uh, metaphysics, um, abductions should be like the main form of inference that brings us to um, metaphysical hypothesis and um, theories. And at the same time, it also allows for more conceptual methods, as we will see it um, also allows, for example, conceptual engineering, which might be like one um, very important part of certain abductive inferences, um, actually. Um, and yeah, the hope is that in this way, one can cash out the idea that inductive metaphysics is firmly based on the science, though it also allows for like a <coughs> priori elements. So uh, how does it relate to um, our notion of progress here? The idea is that uh, um, form of inference abduction is actually well aligned with the two aspects we had for progress. Um, because we, uh, typically um, one can distinguish between two forms of abduction, namely creative abduction and selective abduction. And those two are related uh, to one another in the following way. By creative abduction, one uh, forms explanatory hypothesis that would explain a certain set of phenomena um, and one does so um, by um, introducing new concepts, 
right? So for example, in the case of metaphysics, uh, let's take non-reductive physicalism um, as a metaphysical theory that is um, supposed to explain maybe the relation between the sciences. How, how comes that um, special sciences can form their own laws with their own, um, with their own categorizations and so on. And then we would um, introduce the notion of ontological dependence as one um, um, element of the hypothesis that explains this observation, right? Um, and um, here we can have, like in the case of creative abduction, we have a correspondence to uh, the exploring of theory space, right? This is where we like come up with um, certain options. Then in <coughs> uh, selective abduction, uh, this is maybe more the typical kind of um, inference that one has in mind when one thinks of inference to the best explanation, where we have like a set of hypotheses and then uh, select one of those that best uh, fulfills certain criteria of the quality of explanations. Um, and here, um, so possibly in metaphysics, this would include like the theoretical virtues that uh, Nina also uh, talked about earlier. And this would correspond to uh, constraining theory space in metaphysics. So um, yeah, this for now is just the observation that um, our notion of progress is well aligned with this methodology of inductive metaphysics. Okay, now I give the last word to yeah. Pierre. So um, to conclude, um, um, scientific theory change is a potential challenge for naturalistically applied metaphysics. That is what Kerry McKenzie is getting at. And um, we think that the challenge can be met by basically relaxing her notion of progress. Um, and uh, we think that progress in science is best understood as exploring and constraining theory space, which then inspires a generalization to metaphysics. Um, scientific progress then also boosts meta metaphysical <coughs> progress in specific ways. And uh, progress as exploring and constraining theory space uh, seems to be especially well aligned uh, with uh, what is called inactive metaphysics. Yeah, so thanks. <laughs> Maybe I shall start from that yeah, side yeah. this time, you know? Sure. Ten minutes. Yeah. Thanks very much. This is interesting to apply this Popperian notion of progress mm -hmm. to this problem. I am a little bit worried about how this is going to work in practice. Let me explain. So in a lot of situations where we're constraining possibilities, and this is the sort of case that Carrie really considers in her papers, we come to realize that everything in this in the space of possibilities we were considering is wrong, and so we have to rethink the space of possibilities. And in doing so, some possibilities that we eliminated that were associated with a particular metaphysics that we thought was eliminated reemerge in the new space. Right. So, I mean, we could look at some examples historically, but like in the case of quantum theory, for instance, you might think, ah. Uh, Human is, simple humanism is done for, but then maybe in the new, in the theory of quantum gravity, humanism becomes another possibility because it modifies quantum theory in some way, right? It, it's, it enlarges the space of possibilities that allows for the possibility of a new metaphysics that we thought we had eliminated before. If this possibility is the case, then we don't have the, we have the, we have, a, we can have a Popperian notion of progress for science, but not for metaphysics, because the metaphysical possibilities can be compatible with many different scientific theories, mm -hmm. including ones that we haven't conceived so far. Mm -hmm. That's the concern. And yeah. This is the sort of example that yeah. I think Carrie is really worried about. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. That's 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 fair. Yeah. Um, so what I would say, and um, yeah, so um, so one way. Um, to think about this is, of course, so so on the one hand, theory space. I think we agree is a dynamic uh, entity. Uh, so it is. You, you, you're completely right. You you have to come up with. Uh, you, you will build. You will find new dimensions in this theory space. You will find that certain parts where you thought you uh, you had excluded them maybe pop up again or something like that. Um, that's that's fair, I guess. But um, on the other hand, maybe so. I mean, one way to, to address your 
worry would be to just say, wait, we, we, we thought we excluded it, but it's very hard to exclude this in metaphysics. So uh, we, we should be careful about this. But there are still cases, uh, and that, that's why I brought up the, the classical Hemian. Um, there still there are cases where you where you're quite where you're very confident that that, that you have excluded those. Uh, okay, you are not. Well, I mean, the history of science is full of examples where people are you're making right. these claims, and it turns out. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but um, yeah, um, but but anyway. So even if you, if we accept that, um, I think, or maybe then especially. Um, linking progress to exploring theory space and potentially excluding parts of it is a better way to go than to just directly aim for truth and link progress to truth because that might be where your worry is, is uh, getting uh, like most uh, of it because uh, yeah, if, you, if you aim for truth and we thought that was wrong and, and you, you make progress with respect to truth, and then this comes. Um, then you were like not making progress, but we could then still say what well, we learned a lot about pro, uh, about the theory space. So that's what what we actually want to do. So we have a like way more modest proposal um, that might cope better actually with what you said. But yeah, I have to think about this. Okay, Peter. Yeah, just briefly, I, I wonder what you thought about the quote by David Lewis that I always slide, which seems to go in, in, in pretty much the same direction. He said that a reasonable goal for a philosopher is to actually bring our opinions into equilibrium. And so the common task is to find what uh, equilibria there are that can withstand our examination. But then it remains to each of us to come to rest at one or other of them. So mm -hmm. it's basically exploring this kind of theory space. Also, mm. finally, uh, I think a lot of what you said would resonate with some of the latest work by, by Alan Beebe, mm. who's, I think, yeah, saying very similar things. So uh, I, I'm not sure if you're familiar with some of that work. Okay, yeah, uh, we need to check, I guess, again, but yeah. I'm not sure it's published yet. The book oh. of it. No, there's a book, it's there's coming, a book it's coming, yeah. okay. but I think there's a couple of papers. Oh, okay. okay, yeah, yeah okay. Which uh, which really yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah, we also, I mean, this is uh, obviously like low hanging fruit to some extent, so maybe it's not. I mean, it's not that new. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, thanks. Um, yeah. I think uh, the Lewis quote is also the um, connection of the idea that we can have, like, at the end of inquiry, various equally good metaphysical yeah. theories, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I think this is probably, unfortunately, compatible with this, of course. But yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But this, I mean, this, the main, main main problem is that like exclusion is so hard in yeah. physics, and this is probably a difference to science. But this thing, so it's maybe not really exclusion, but it's it's it's, it's yeah. You have figuring out where in this yeah. kind, of, kind of potential energy yeah, right. centers you you may end up. Right. I mean, we would have made a lot of progress when we end up with um, say three candidates for the true metaphysical theory, right? Uh, if we then <coughs> cannot proceed any further, then so be it. But, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I have a question that it allows me to recycle a question I had for the previous talk. <laughs> 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 uh, I'm wondering about all this uh, naturalized metaphysics stuff. Uh, to what extent you, how you, because you all emphasize the continuity between science and metaphysics, mm -hmm. but there must be distinct if you want to, your claim, to be about something that is not science. And I'm wondering when I listen to you, if there is any more, if there is any room for a uh, distinction between the two, or why are metaphysicians just doing science, or are they doing something else with the same methods? So I'm, I'm a bit puzzled by uh, all this, because I don't see a definite uh, job for metaphysics in all this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in a way, um, the more you emphasize the continuity thesis, the more you would say probably that metaphysicians are just doing more science. Kind of. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, right, I'm agree. I go for metaphysics independence. I would say scientists are doing metaphysics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say scientists are doing metaphysics. Right. Works both ways, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree with you. <laughs> I mean, uh, you could you could say that there are 
traditionally there are certain questions you would pose in science and would pose in metaphysics, um, but um, that are, I mean, we, we often will, will find that, that things are interrelated in a very interesting sense and that you cannot really draw this very specific line. But I, I'm, I'm also, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I tend to like kind of go back and forth with this. So, uh, for example, Kerry uh, has like these very interesting remarks on why metaphysics is a very different pro, pro uh, um, uh, endeavor and um, not continuous to, to science in, in that way. So yeah, I'm not entirely sure. But, yeah. okay. It's not because two things overlap that they are the same. <laughs> no, that's true. This yes, seems obvious, true. but now that's today true. it's completely, oh my god, we can't say that. <laughs> so, unfortunately, or fortunately, <laughs> let's close the day.